In this video session, we are going to test the Node.js project. We have provided the necessary commands inside teamroutes.js javascript file. We have provided the necessary commands inside this teamcontroller.js javascript file. We have also provided additional commands and some changes inside this teamservice.js javascript file. We want to test the Node.js project after providing all these code changes. Not only that, ladies and gentlemen, not only that, we would like to also witness how all these changes, how all these commands can work together to perform database operation as well as file upload operation to Cloudinary. We want to see how the commands are working together. To inspect how the commands are working together, we are going to leverage, we are going to make use of a very useful tool sitting inside this Visual Studio Code. That tool is a debug tool, okay? It's a debug tool. Ladies and gentlemen, before, okay, ah, before we can use the debug tool, we need to set some breakpoints inside the respective JavaScript file. I shall begin with teamcontroller.js JavaScript file. Inside this JavaScript file, find the command which calls create team and team member data method which belongs to this team data manager object. My command is sitting at line 7. At the left margin, you can left click in order to create a breakpoint. A breakpoint means you want to ask the JavaScript engine to pause at that particular line. You will need to set up two breakpoints inside teamcontroller.js JavaScript file. The first breakpoint corresponds to line 7, which has the command which calls create team and team member data method, which belongs to team data manager object. The second breakpoint is at line 9. This line 9 has the command which uses the response object to send back a response to the client side. Shift your attention to teamservice.js javascript file. Within this teamservice.js javascript file, focus on the command which assigns the body property which belongs to this req parameter variable object into this data variable. This command is found at line 9 for my teamservice.js javascript file. Yours may be at other lines. Just find this command, set a breakpoint corresponding to that line which has the command. Slowly scroll down, find the looping logic. My looping logic is found starting from line 34 up to line 44. You will focus on setting the second breakpoint and the third breakpoint. The second breakpoint should be set at the line corresponding to the command which calls upload stream to Cloudinary method, which belongs to the Cloudinary object. For my teamservice.js JavaScript file, my command is found at line 37. That's why I have set a breakpoint corresponding to that line. Next, let us find the command which calls the query method, which belongs to the connection object. This command focuses on creating a record inside that team underscore file table. Find this command and set a breakpoint corresponding to the line which has that command. After setting the necessary breakpoints in the respective JavaScript file, observe closely where my mouse pointer is. Make sure you set your focus to debug console. Make sure you set your focus to debug console. I shall set my focus to debug console now. Next, follow my mouse pointer movement. Choose run and debug. Choose 
run and debug. After choosing run and debug, you will see a debug interface appearing at the left hand side of the Visual Studio Code development environment. Among all these sections inside this debug interface, the only section you need to pay attention to is the watch section. Is the watch section, ladies and gentlemen. I will start running the Node.js project in debug mode now. To start debugging, I will look out for this start debugging button interface and click it. Observe the debug console interface. The Node.js project has already started in debug mode and it is currently listening to port 4000. Also, notice that there is a tiny debugging toolbar appearing after we have successfully launched the Node.js project in debug mode. Within this MySQL Workbench environment, I have an SQL script file create underscore db underscore tables underscore with underscore team underscore file underscore table dot sql. I have applied all these commands inside this SQL script file to prepare a fresh database. As a result, I shall have empty team table, empty team underscore member table, and empty team underscore file table. Within the Cloudinary interface, at this media library section, I have created a Teams folder. I have created a Teams folder. Finally, I shall prepare the correct inputs within this Postman interface. To prepare a POST HTTP request, make sure that you have set up a POST HTTP request. Make sure you have applied this URL address, http colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 4000 forward slash API forward slash teams forward slash detail. After providing this URL address, let us focus at the body section. The content type of the data which is going to be sent using this post HTTP request must be multipart forward slash form dash data. Therefore, you must make sure that you have chosen this radio button titled as form dash data. After specifying the content type, you shall make sure that you have all the necessary key value pair information. I have specified a set of key value pairs. This set of key value pairs shall work together to describe one team D record information, three team D member record information, and finally two key value pairs having the same key name file. Among all these key value pairs, I have prepared an additional two key value pair information which has the same key name file. I shall demonstrate how to associate two PNG graphic files to the two keys which share the same key name. Observe where my mouse pointer is. It is right now hovering at the line corresponding to the first file key. Currently, the key is text type. I shall change this text type to file type. Next, I shall move my mouse pointer to the next line corresponding to the second file key. I will set the type of this file key to file type. Then, through this select files, I shall click to browse for the correct PNG file that I want to associate to the file key. I have selected team underscore d underscore logo dot PNG graphic file and I have associated this file data content to the first file key. I shall click select files to start choosing the second PNG file and associate it to the second file key. Usually, after setting up all these inputs, I shall save this setup so that I can reuse this HTTP request setting in the future.
Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to click this send button inside the postman interface. Once this send button is clicked, the postman shall make a post HTTP request and all these key value pair information which collectively describes one team information, three team member information and two file information shall be sent along with the post HTTP request. I shall click the send button now. Once you have clicked the send button, notice that the postman interface is in the waiting mode. It is trying to wait for a response from our backend system. But you will notice that it will just keep on waiting and waiting. Let me quickly shift my attention to the Visual Studio Code environment. Notice that when the Node.js project is started in debug mode, notice this observation at teamcontroller.js JavaScript file. I have set a breakpoint at line 7, which will call create team and team member data method, which belongs to team data manager object. This expression shall get the internal logic of this create team and team member data method to begin the database record creation operation and file data upload operation. The JavaScript engine has not processed the command at line 7 yet. The JavaScript engine is just pausing at the command at line 7, waiting for my further instruction. Observe where my mouse pointer is. My mouse pointer is right now hovering on top of this icon interface titled as step into by clicking this icon interface titled as step into or by pressing the f11 function key i am telling the visual studio code to get the javascript engine to jump into or to step into the commands which contribute towards the internal logic of this create team and team member data method which begins the database record creation process and the file data upload process. But I am not going to do that now. I need you to pay attention towards this REQ input parameter variable which represents or reference the internal request object managed by our Express Framework Engine. When the Node.js project is started in debug mode, I can use my mouse pointer to click and slowly select this REQ input parameter variable, right click and within this context menu, choose add to watch. After choosing add to watch, quickly shift your attention to the debugging interface at the left hand side of the Visual Studio Code development environment. Widen the debug interface so that we can inspect the REQ input parameter variable content and how the content is being structured. I shall expand this REQ input parameter variable now. There are many properties found inside this REQ input parameter variable which represents the internal request object managed by our Express Framework Engine. There are two important properties that we need to pay attention because the internal logic or all the JavaScript commands inside that create team and team member data method shall need all these information to perform database operation as well as file data upload operation. The two important properties are the body property and the files property. The body property and the files property. Let me expand the body property. Let us study the content. There is an object of information associated to the body property. There is an object of information associated to this body property sitting inside our internal request object represented by our REQ input parameter variable. And let us study all these properties carefully. This object of information has six properties. The email property, the first name property, is leader property, last name property, team description property, 
and team name property. The email property of this object of information has an array of email information associated to the email property. The first name property of this object of information also has an array consisting of three string elements associated to it. The isLeader property of this object of information has an array consisting of three string elements associated to it. The last name property of this object of information also has an array which also consists of three string elements associated to it. The team description property of this object of information is quite straightforward. There is only a string value team D description associated to it. The team name property also has a singular string value which can be recognized as team D associated to it. Let me slowly scroll down. I shall expand the files property and we shall check out the content and how the content is structured for this files property. By observation, we can see that this files property has an array consisting of two elements associated to it. Notice that I did not emphasize the files property has an object of information associated to it because I did not see any curly bracket pair wrapping around the data. Instead, I have spotted a square bracket pair. Therefore, an array consisting of two elements. Each element has a set of property value pairs describing one file information. Each element inside the array has several properties. For example, the first element of the array has field name property with a file string associated to it. The element also has original name property, which has a string value which can be recognized as team underscore d underscore logo dot png associated to it. The first element of this array also has another property called encoding, which has a string value 7 bit associated to it. Next, the first element of this array has MIME type property. This MIME type property has a string value image forward slash PNG associated to it. Finally, we can see another property called buffer. This buffer property does not have a string value associated to it. Let me repeat, this buffer property does not have a string value associated to it. Instead, it has a buffer object associated to it. We often need a buffer object to hold a file digital content. This technique is very popular among developers. The first element of the array has all these property value pairs. With all these property value pairs, the first element in the array has successfully represent or describe one file data that has been received from the incoming POST HTTP request. The second element of the array also consists of the same set of property value pair information. But of course, the value associated to each property for the second element of the array is trying to describe the second file data information that has been obtained from the incoming post HTTP request. Ladies and gentlemen, these are all the information you need to gather through this watch section within this debugging interface. Focusing back on this team controller.js JavaScript file, when the JavaScript engine has paused at line 7, waiting for my further instruction, we have obtained one important conclusion somehow or the other the express framework engine internal logic has successfully rebuilt all the important information such as the team d information the three team d member information and most importantly the two file information inside the internal request object body property and the files property 
and this input parameter variable req is right now referencing or representing that internal request object and the entire internal request object represented by this req input parameter variable is going to be used as an input for this create team and team member data method ladies and gentlemen how did the express framework engine internal logic able to reconstruct all these information from the incoming post http request let us observe the team routes.js javascript file within the team routes.js javascript file there are several important commands which has educated our express framework engine how to rebuild the information all these are made possible through the usage of the mounter library after we have applied this command at line 4 which calls the require function the internal logic of this require function shall build a module object shall build a module object and inside that module object shall have a lot of powerful functionalities this module object shall be represented by our constant variable mounter the command at line 7 is using the mounter object in order to dynamically build a middleware the name of this middleware is called upload i have referred to the online documentation on how to use this mounter object to dynamically build a middleware having the name upload which has two important capabilities the two capabilities are the internal logic of this upload middleware which has been dynamically built shall extract any file digital content which can be found inside an incoming http request and hold all those information within a memory storage instead of creating temporary files the second capability of this dynamically built upload middleware is the internal logic will keep on monitoring or observing for any key names which matches a name called file and the internal logic of this upload middleware will expect or insist upon that there must be two pairs of key value information sharing the same key name file once this upload middleware has been dynamically built at line 7 the command at line 10 shall tell the express framework engine to look out for a post http request the express engine shall also check whether the incoming url pattern partially matches this url pattern string recognized as forward slash teams forward slash detail once all these conditions are met the express framework engine shall continue to apply the internal logic sitting inside this upload middleware the internal logic of this upload middleware shall check the incoming http request content and further structure all these information inside the internal request object at the respective body property and the files property after the internal logic of this upload middleware has completed the express framework engine shall get the javascript engine to begin executing the internal logic contributed by this create team and team member data method which belongs to the team controller object always remember the important concept of this require function at line 3 we have applied this command to use the require function to process all the javascript commands inside the team controller.js javascript file the internal logic of this require function shall build a module object and the module object which is being built through this require function shall have that create team and team member data function sitting inside it and this module object is being assigned to this team controller variable as a result we see this team controller variable as a module object within this module object it shall have a method called 
create team and team member data method. And you must be aware that the internal logic inside this create team and team member data method is contributed by all the JavaScript commands that have been provided inside the team controller.js JavaScript file. Let me focus back on team controller .js JavaScript file. Within the team controller.js JavaScript file, we have provided important commands starting from line 4 up to line 20 as the body of this anonymous function. When the internal logic of the required function processes the JavaScript commands inside the team controller.js JavaScript file, the internal logic of that required function shall spot this anonymous function. This anonymous function has been assigned to this create team and team member data which belongs to exports which belongs to module. With this expression, the internal logic of the require function sitting inside the team rocks will be able to build a module object which has one important method. That important method is again create team and team member data. And we have used this expression as the third input for this post method which belongs to the router object so that the express framework engine shall get the JavaScript engine continue its operation to execute the commands which contributes towards the internal logic of this create team and team member data method. That's why the JavaScript engine has paused at line 7. Before I control the JavaScript engine to execute further commands, I need you to be very sure that with the help of the Mautal library and some commands inside the teamroutes.js JavaScript file, the internal request object shall have a body property associated to an object of information consisting of a set of property value pairs all working together to describe one team information, three team member information. The internal logic of this request object shall also have a false property which has an array associated to it. And that array has two elements. Each element shall represent or describe one file data information. Ladies and gentlemen, the Node.js project is still running in debug mode. My project is still running in debug mode. I really, really want to quickly jump into explaining all the commands inside the teamcontroller.js JavaScript file, the teamservice.js JavaScript file, how all these commands working together to achieve the most important goal, which is to prepare all the necessary records inside the database and to accomplish the file upload operation. I want to explain all these commands residing inside those two JavaScript files immediately. I am so eager to do that. But I really, really need to constantly remind you all those commands are useless if I do not know how to provide commands inside a file similar to teamroutes.js javascript file. So before I eagerly jump into further explanation of all those commands inside those two team controller and team service.js javascript file, before I do that, I need you to have some kind of mindset or understanding about this teamroutes.js javascript file. There is always such a file in the Node.js project. There is always such a file. In fact, there can be more than one file, okay? Which you will place decision-making commands. All the commands that are placed inside such a file are usually seen as decision-making commands. Decision-making commands are commands which will decide how to reconstruct the data inside the internal request object managed by the express framework engine and decide the appropriate method or function 
to service an incoming HTTP request. In our practice session so far, there is only one important function, which is create team and team member data function. But inside a Node.js project, which contributes towards a solution to help users, it will consist of a lot of other functions or method with function names such as delete team by team ID, delete team member by team member ID, update team by team ID, update team member by team member ID. You will have all sorts of functions residing inside the Node.js project to help the users through a user interface to perform record management on team and team member data. Therefore, I want to caution you that you are just merely providing code which are grouped as functions such as middleware function. You have seen a middleware function which was dynamically built using the mounter and we are using an upload variable to reference that middleware function. Therefore, we see this upload variable as a middleware function because it shall contain a set of code ready to rebuild the necessary data in the correct properties within the internal request object. You are also just providing code grouped together under the function name create team and team member data function which can be obtained from the teamcontroller.js javascript file. So, ladies and gentlemen, you are just providing code. Providing code to what? Providing code to the Express Framework Engine's router engine. When you have started the Node.js project as a system, the Express Framework Engine internal logic will decide, uh, it will decide, by itself based on the instructions that you have given to it earlier on when to execute the given code grouped as functions and based on the conditions that you have defined inside the routes.js javascript file such as is the method of the incoming http request a post method http request or is the incoming http request matches certain particular URL pattern that you have specified. So all those commands that you have given inside this routes.js JavaScript file are decision-making commands. You need to pay attention to all these commands sitting inside the routes.js JavaScript file because there shall be some other similar files inside a Node.js project which you are required to build in the future. And you need to have a constant reminder that you provide commands inside here to help the Express Framework Engine to make decisions and how to repackage the necessary information within that internal request object. Why? Without all these commands working together to get the Express Framework Engine to behave properly, even if our commands inside the create team and team member data function is indeed accurate, is indeed stable, it will still fail because the data inside the internal request object were not structured correctly. As a result, the information cannot be retrieved by the commands written inside the teamcontroller.js JavaScript file or the teamservice.js JavaScript file to construct the correct SQL instruction to tell the database what to do, to upload the correct file data content to Cloudinary. Ladies and gentlemen, after appreciating the information inside this internal request object represented by this req input parameter variable, we shall get the JavaScript engine to step into or to jump into the JavaScript commands which contribute towards the internal logic of this create team and team member data method 
which belongs to this team data manager object. Observe the command at line 1. The command at line 1 builds a module object using this team service.js JavaScript file. Therefore, you see this team data manager object as an object representing certain functionalities that have been shared out from that team service.js JavaScript file. I shall use my mouse pointer hover upon this icon titled as step into and I shall click it now. Observe how the Visual Studio Code debugger tool behaves. You will notice that the tool automatically shifts our attention to the team service.js JavaScript file. And right now, the JavaScript engine is currently pausing at line 4. If we use our mouse pointer to hover upon this REQ input parameter variable, you will notice that Visual Studio Code tries to come up with some smart interface showing you the content inside this REQ input parameter variable. You can easily identify that this REQ input parameter variable has the necessary information sitting inside the respective body property and the files property. Notice where my mouse pointer is now. I want to click upon this icon interface titled as continue. You can also do this by pressing the F5 function key. Let me click now. You will notice that the JavaScript engine is now pausing at line 9. At line 9, I want to copy out the object of information from the body property which belongs to this REQ input parameter variable into this data variable over here. When you double click upon this data variable, Visual Studio Code will try to highlight where this data variable is being used. By visual inspection, you can see that a lot of JavaScript commands are actually using this data variable and all these JavaScript commands have expressions extracting the information out from the data variable. What is inside this data variable? At this point of time, the JavaScript engine has not executed the command at line 9. The JavaScript engine shall wait for my instruction. To get the JavaScript engine execute the command at line 9, I will need to find this icon interface called step over. You can also tell the JavaScript engine to do so by pressing the function key F10. Let me click step over now. Let me mouse over upon this data variable now. Through this smart inspection interface provided by the Visual Studio Code, we can easily identify that this data variable is now referencing the object of information associated to the body property which belongs to the internal request object. And let me double click upon this data variable. Visual Studio Code is now highlighting where this data variable is being used. You can see that there are four important JavaScript commands. The first important JavaScript command shall try to build a valid SQL statement which can be recognized by the database to create one team record inside the team table. Let me mouse over upon the team name which belongs to the data variable. We should right now see this data variable as an object of information. With this expression, the JavaScript engine is going to treat it as a string value team D. By using this expression team description which belongs to the data variable, we see the data variable as an object of information. With this expression, the JavaScript engine will treat it as a string value recognized as team D description. The command at line 15 shall prepare an SQL instruction which is going to be recognized by the database engine to create a new team D record inside the team table. The rest of the JavaScript commands starting from line 18 up to line 32 shall build 
three SQL instructions telling the database engine to create three records inside the team underscore member table. In this video session, I want to focus on the file upload operation and the record creation inside the team underscore file table. I want to focus on the file upload operation as well as the record creation inside the team underscore file table. Therefore, I want to find this icon interface titled as continue. By choosing continue at this debugging toolbar or press the function key F5, I will ask the debugging tool look for the next breakpoint. As a result, the JavaScript engine shall quickly process or execute all these commands starting from line 12 up to line 30 so that it can pause at line 37 waiting for my further instruction. Let me choose continue or press the function key F5 now. Observe that the JavaScript engine is now pausing at line 37. The command at line 37 is trying to call upload stream to cloudinary method which belongs to this cloudinary module object. I shall slowly scroll up now. I want to point out that this module object cloudinary has been built by using the require function which gets the JavaScript engine processes all the commands sitting inside this cloudinary.js JavaScript file situated at this utils folder. The commands inside this cloudinary.js JavaScript file was provided by me. You didn't code any commands inside this cloudinary.js JavaScript file. When the internal logic of this require function is building a module object, this module object shall have an important function or shall have an important method called upload stream to cloudinary. All those code were provided by me inside that cloudinary.js JavaScript file. It shall be sitting inside the new module object and this cloudinary variable has been declared to reference the new module object built by this require function. That's why at line 37, we are able to call this upload stream to cloudinary method which belongs to this cloudinary module object. The internal logic of this upload stream to cloudinary shall perform one file data upload operation. Ladies and gentlemen, shall perform one file data upload operation. And this method requires an input. The input must be a buffer object holding the digital data content which describes a file. This command at line 37 is sitting inside the body of this for loop. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention that there is a for loop starting from line 34 up to line 44. The body of this for loop shall be executed twice. Let me mouse over the length property which belongs to the files which belongs to req. You will notice that the JavaScript engine shall treat this expression as two. Currently, the file index which is used as a counting variable for this for loop is having a value of zero. During each pass of the for loop, the file index shall be incremented by one. The looping logic shall control the JavaScript engine to process all these commands within the body of the for loop twice. During each pass of the loop, the upload stream to cloudinary method which belongs to this cloudinary module object shall be called twice. During each call, the expression which is used as the input for this upload stream to cloudinary shall change. During the first pass of the loop, file index will be zero. When I get the JavaScript engine process the command at line 37, the JavaScript engine shall base on this expression to obtain the buffer object which is associated to the buffer property 
which belongs to the first element inside the array associated to the files property, which again belongs to the internal request object referenced by this req input parameter variable. I don't want the JavaScript engine to jump into the commands which contribute towards the internal logic of this upload stream to Cloudinary. Therefore, I don't want to choose this step into icon interface available at the debugging toolbar. Instead, I just want to choose step over by pressing either the function key F10 or click upon this icon interface which I am pointing out over here. Let me click this step over now. Next, the JavaScript engine shall pause at line 40. When the JavaScript engine pauses at line 40, I need you to shift your attention to the Teams folder inside Cloudinary. I need you to use your web browser, shift your attention to the Teams folder at Cloudinary. Within this media library section, I shall find my Teams folder and I shall click to choose it. Through this observation, we can be quite sure that the internal logic of this upload stream to Cloudinary has managed to perform one file data upload operation to Cloudinary and the file data has been written into the Teams folder. Now, I need the Node.js system to remember the file operation. Let me repeat. Now, I need the Node.js system to remember the file operation that has been completed at line 37. To do so, we will need the help of the team underscore file table. To do so, we will definitely need the help of the team underscore file table. That is why we need the command starting from line 40. The command at line 40 is trying to create an SQL insert record instruction which inserts a new record to team underscore file table. That is why we need the command starting at line 40. The purpose of this command is to construct a new SQL instruction telling the database engine to insert a new record into that team underscore file table. Ladies and gentlemen, to build up the correct SQL instruction to tell the database engine to create a new record inside the team underscore file table, the information which is required to build this SQL instruction will come from two separate sources. The information which is going to be used to construct this SQL instruction will come from two separate sources. Let me point out the first source. Observe where my mouse pointer is. My mouse pointer is right on top of this file upload result variable. Double click upon this file upload result variable. Right click and slowly within this context menu, choose add to watch. Choose add to watch. We need to inspect the content inside this file upload result variable. I shall choose add to watch now. Let me widen my debugging interface. I shall expand the file upload result variable. Through initial observation, we can see that this file upload result variable consists of an object of information and this object of information has two major properties, the data property and the status property. Let me expand the data property there is another object of information associated to this data property. There are three property value pairs for this object of information. The first property value pair is having a property name public ID and this is a string which is associated to this public ID. From where did this string value come from? The second property is rather straightforward. It is a status property with a string recognized as success associated to it. 
the third property is the URL property and that is a string which looks like an URL address by taking a closer look seems like this URL address is important to us because we need this URL address to fetch or to retrieve the digital content which has been written into the Cloudinary Digital Repository. I need you to shift your attention to the web browser. You should see a digital content written inside the Teams folder. Observe how the digital content is being displayed at Cloudinary. This digital content has been assigned with a unique value. When the Cloudinary system has written the digital content inside the Teams folder, the digital content shall be given a unique value. You can see the unique value at this section over here. Next, use your mouse pointer to double click upon the digital content. By observing this interface, this is the URL address which we can use to assess or to fetch the digital content from Cloudinary. Let me click this copy URL to copy the URL address. I shall use that URL address inside my URL location text box. Inside the URL location text box, hit the enter key. The web browser shall use that URL address to make a GET HTTP request asking the Cloudinary system for the correct digital content. Ladies and gentlemen, Observe the command at line 37. Observe the command at line 37. I have provided the necessary JavaScript commands which forms the internal logic for this upload stream to Cloudinary function. The internal logic of this upload stream to Cloudinary will return an object of information. This object of information can be captured by any variables such as file upload result variable situated at the left hand side of the assignment operator. Among the content inside this file upload result variable, we need the unique ID information which is associated to the public ID property. We need the URL address information which is associated to the URL property. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the first source which we need to obtain some information that can be used when creating this SQL instruction to create a new record inside the team underscore file table. Next, I want to point out the second source which we need to acquire further information to make this SQL instruction complete. I will widen the debugging interface and I want to expand the REQ input parameter variable. Slowly, I would like to expand the files property. We already know that there is an array associated to this files property. Let us have a look at the first element within the array. Among all these properties, for the first element in the array, there are three property value pair information which are important to us. The first property value pair information is the original name. The second property value pair information is MIME type. The third property value pair information is of course the buffer property. We have used the buffer property which has the buffer object associated to it as an input for the upload stream to Cloudinary method to write the file data content inside the Cloudinary's Teams folder. We need our database to help the Node.js system to remember the original file name used by the user, such as team underscore d underscore logo dot png. We need our database to help our Node.js system to remember the file format of the file used by the user, which is image forward slash png. 
Ladies and gentlemen, these are the two pieces of information which we need for our SQL instruction. And ladies and gentlemen, the files property which belongs to the internal request object is the second source which we need to refer to to obtain those information. Let us shift our attention to this teamservice.js JavaScript file. While the JavaScript engine is still pausing at line 40, I will ask the JavaScript engine to execute the command starting from line 40. This is done by either pressing the function key F10 or choosing step over at the debugging toolbar. I shall choose step over now. Notice that the JavaScript engine has jumped back to line 34. Observe that after choosing step over, the JavaScript engine has executed the command starting from line 40. This shall send the SQL instruction to the database engine. The database engine shall create a new record inside the team underscore file table to remember the file data upload operation that has completed at line 37. The JavaScript engine has jumped back to line 34. At line 34, the JavaScript engine is focusing upon the expression to increment the file index counting variable. Let me click step over by choosing step over or pressing function key F10. Now, the file index variable is having a value of 1. The length property which belongs to the files property which again belongs to the internal request object represented or referenced by this req input parameter variable is still having a value of 2. So, is 1 still less than 2? The condition is going to be evaluated as true. As a result, by choosing step over again, the JavaScript engine shall focus at line 37. It shall also pause at line 37. The JavaScript engine shall begin the second pass of the loop. The second pass of the loop. At line 37, upload stream to cloudinary method is going to be called for the second time. This time, file index variable is going to be treated as 1. With this expression forming the input for this upload stream to cloudinary, the JavaScript engine knows that it needs to fetch the buffer object associated to this buffer property which belongs to the second element inside the array associated to the files property which again belongs to the internal request object referenced by this req input parameter variable. Therefore, once I choose step over or pressing the function key F10, I am asking the JavaScript engine to execute this command at line 37 again to upload the second file data content to Cloudinary. Let me choose step over now. Once the file data upload operation has completed, the JavaScript engine shall pause at line 40. Immediately, I will need you to shift your attention to the Cloudinary interface now. Within the Cloudinary interface, find this refresh and click it. Through this observation, we can verify that the second file data content has been written into the Teams folder. A new unique ID value has been assigned to this second file data content. Let me double click upon this file data content. This is the URL address which can be used to fetch the digital content from Cloudinary to assess the second file data content. Let us pay attention to the next command at line 40 inside this teamservice.js JavaScript file. Again, we need to get the database to help our Node.js system to remember about the file data upload operation that has recently completed. By acquiring 
the necessary information from two separate sources. The first source is through this file upload result variable, which has the public ID property value pair information and the URL property value pair information. The second source is from the original name having team underscore d underscore group underscore photo dot png string value associated to it and the mime type property value pair information which has image forward slash png string value associated to it these are the two property value pair information which belongs to the second element inside the array indexed as one associated to this files property which belongs to the internal request object. I will click step over in order to get the JavaScript engine to create the second record inside the team underscore file table now. Again, the JavaScript engine shall shift its attention to line 34. The file index variable shall be incremented from 1 to 2. Let me click step over again. Notice that the file index variable is right now having a value of 2. Is 2 less than 2? The condition is going to be evaluated as false. As a result, the JavaScript engine shall avoid the body of the loop. It shall exit the loop because the condition has been evaluated as false. Let me choose step over again. The command at line 45 shall send an SQL instruction commit. This will tell the database engine to commit all the changes that has occurred on the database. In other words, all the changes shall be made permanent. Finally, let me choose step over. The command at line 46 is actually passing back the execution control back to the calling command inside that team controller.js JavaScript file. While passing back the execution control, we are also providing an object of information having the status tied with a string value success and having a data property tied with an object of information with only one property value pair information which describes the unique ID of the new team record created inside the team table. Observe where my mouse pointer is. I shall click continue at the debugging toolbar now. Notice that the execution has jumped back to teamcontroller.js JavaScript file. At line 9, when the JavaScript engine executes this command, we are sending back a response having the status code of 201 and this response shall consist of a JSON formatted information which describes whether the operation has been successful or not. Observe the debugging toolbar. I shall choose continue. The Node.js project is still running in debug mode but the JavaScript engine is sleeping now. Let us observe the postman interface. The postman has received the response that describes the status of the HTTP request. The postman has received the response with the JSON formatted information describing the status of the post HTTP request. Please check your database. The team table should have one team record. The team underscore member table should have three team member records. The team underscore file table should have two records. Each record inside the team underscore file table describes the file upload operation. Each record inside the team underscore file table describes a file digital content written inside Cloudinary.